Hey there. Welcome to our tutorial on collaborating in worlds. Building experiences with friends and teams opens up amazing creative possibilities, and it's a lot of fun. And today, we're going to show you how to make the most of world collaborative features. My name's Andy, and in this video, we're going to show you how to make collaboration smoother and more organized. Whether you're scripting, modeling, or just trying to stay out of each other's way, these tips and tools will help you avoid overwriting each other's work, keep track of who's doing what, know when it's safe to make changes, and build faster without the frustration. In this video, we'll cover best practices for staying organized while working together, including how to manage scripts and assets when multiple people are involved. We will explore tools found in worlds that will help you collaborate more efficiently. Let's take each of these subjects one at a time. First, collaboration. Collaborating with others in worlds is a powerful way to build when each team member has the right role and access. Let's walk through how to assign the right roles and manage your collaborators using the tools in the desktop editor. There are several different collaborator roles that determine what actions people can take in your world. So let's look at the common user roles we have in the system. First, there's the owner or the creator role, and that's you. As the owner, you have full control over the world and all the collaborator permissions. Next is the editor role. Editors can make changes to the world, including adding, modifying, or deleting objects and scripts, but they can't add any other collaborators. Then we have the tester role. Testers can experience and test your world, but they don't have the ability to make any edits. Finally, there's the viewer role. Viewers can only observe the world in its current state, which is particularly useful for demonstration purposes. OK, let's look at how to add collaborators to a world. Here's my world. It's just a version of Chop and Pop. And as you can see, Zane's already in here making some small tweaks to a couple of the meshes in the world. Hi, Zane. OK, I want to add my scripting team. So I'm going to go up here to the drop down, which is collaborators next to my profile picture. And I'm going to click Invite People. Here, I've got a list of su suggested collaborators. So you can see Buck Super Goose is on there. But if the person I want to add isn't on that list, I can just type their name here. So I'm going to type Buck Super Goose and click there. I can use this drop down to choose between editor, so that they can make changes to the world, or tester, where they can't make changes, but they can play test the world. Buck Super Goose, I can keep them as an editor. And then I'm going to click Invite to invite them to test my world. Now that I've invited Buck Super Goose to my world, let's see what happens from their perspective when they receive that invitation. So I'm going to go back to my creation home. And in here, just at the top, you'll see that there's this bell with notifications. And it's got a little blue dot on it when I have a new notification. If I click that bell, I can see any invitations to edit or to test other people's worlds in there. You can see that Buck Super Goose has added me as an editor for a couple of their worlds. And so when I accept those, I should be able to then see them appear in the My Worlds part of the creation home. Each role has specific permissions designed to support different team functions while maintaining appropriate levels of access control. Assigning roles matters. Not everyone needs full access to your world. And giving it to the wrong person can cause serious issues. Assigning the right role to the right person provides several important benefits. It helps prevent accidental edits or lost work. And it keeps team responsibilities clear and well-defined. Most importantly, it protects your world from unwanted changes. When collaborating, keep these best practices in mind. First, give edit access only to the people actively working on the build or scripts. Use the tester role for project managers, marketing team members, and others who don't need editing access. And for larger teams, create and test assets in separate staging worlds before importing them into your main world. We'll look at that more later. Remember that trust is key. Collaborators can copy and republish your world using import world. Only invite people you trust and regularly review who has access. It's important to note that when multiple collaborators are active, exiting preview mode won't stop simulation for others, so your workflows always stay smooth. Don't forget that collaborators can take full control of your world if you delete your account and you haven't removed them first. Changes made by collaborators may affect your build, so remember to check roles and permissions regularly. 
One of the common roadblocks with collaborative workflows is that frequently the activities of one team might interfere with members of another team. For example, if the art team is making changes to the environment, this might overlap with the operations of the scripting team that's currently playtesting the world in edit mode. The inefficient solution is to force all your teams to wait for one another to complete changes. Thankfully, Worlds has a much more efficient solution, branching or creating different copies of your worlds. By creating copies of your world, you gain several valuable capabilities. Let's look at how to make a copy of our world. So I have the world that I'm working on here, Chop and Pop, and I'm going to click the ellipsis next to the title. I'm going to click Duplicate, and it's going to pre-fill a title for my duplicate world by adding clone, cloned to the end of the title. Let's make this clearer. So this is going to be the one that I'm working on. So I'm going to put square bracket and the dev at the start so that I know it's the one I'm working on. I'm putting this at the start so that it appears first in the title in the creation home. Then I'm going to click duplicate and it should be should then appear in the my worlds shelf here. So now I've duplicated that world. You can create separate copies of your main world for different teams or features to work on independently. You should make sure these copies are properly named following your established conventions for clarity. It's important to ensure team members have the appropriate access roles for all the different branches based on their responsibilities. So for example, in my example where I created the Andy Dev clone, um, I might want to add the other scripters or my QA team who's going to be testing the world. When a feature is complete, you can turn it into an asset that can be seamlessly integrated back into the main world or what we call the main branch. And we can do that through shared folders. Now that you've seen how to work in separate branches, let's talk about how to share assets between those branches efficiently. Shared folders are a fundamental feature for effective collaborative workflows that create a common asset repository that your entire team can access. Let's look at how to create a shared folder. And we're going to do this on the Creator Portal. So you can go to the Creator Portal by opening your browser and typing in horizon.meta.com forward slash creator. You'll need to log in to be able to see it. Once there, if you click on the My Assets dropdown, and then you can either create a new folder to store the assets for your project, or if you've already got one, you can find that folder here. To share it with your team, click on the Share button right here, and then type the members of your team that you want to share it with. So I'm going to share it with Buck Super Goose, who I've added as a collaborator to my world. This then means that Buck Super Goose will be able to see the, uh, the assets that are shared with them in the shared folder. Once I've added a collaborator, I should be able to see them in the collaborators tab within the folder. And this then means that anyone with access to that folder can add, edit, or remove assets from that folder. So this is how we can then um, import those assets from the branched world back into the main world. Shared folders provide a common repository that your entire team can access. All the different asset types, like meshes, scripts, and textures, and materials, they all live in one centralized shared location. And this means that multiple team members can then access and update the same assets whenever they need to. It means that projects remain consistent and can continue smoothly even if team members leave. And it also means that bottlenecks are eliminated because any team member can make necessary changes. All right. So we've learned how to streamline our workflow by branching worlds and creating and using shared folders. But it's also important to be mindful of consistency across our assets. And you can achieve that with asset templates. Asset templates are a powerful feature that help you streamline collaborative creation. If you're familiar with Unity, think of asset templates like prefabs, reusable objects that can be updated across your entire project at once. And they're what we're going to put in our shared folder so that we can collaborate effectively. Asset templates allow you to create a master version of an object or group of objects, place instances of that template throughout the world, and then update all those instances at once by modifying the original template and maintaining consistency across the entire project. Asset templates also enhance the branching strategy we discussed earlier. So it means the art team can work in one world creating and refining those templates. And then the scripting team or different members of the scripting team could have their own worlds. 
um, and they can work in their own branch using placeholder versions. So when the art assets are finalized, the templates in the shared folder are updated, and changes propagate to all instances without breaking script connections. All right, let's look at how we create an asset template in our world, our chop and pop example that we're looking at. So uh, to keep things simple, I'm going to add a mesh to the world, and then I'm going to turn it into an asset template and put it in our shared folder that we have um, shared across the team. So let's start by looking for a mesh that I want to use. So I'm going to use the public assets in the asset library. I'm going to drag this pirate ship figurehead and put it in my world. It's pretty big, but I don't know. I kind of like it. It adds something to the atmosphere. Let's uh, position it something like this. Cool. All right, I want this in multiple places in my world. So rather than just duplicating this, um, which might lose some of, the, some of the properties or the script properties, what I can do is right-click it either in the viewport here or in the hierarchy. Right-click right that entity and then select Create Asset. I should give it a name. So this is my huge skeleton figurehead like this. Um, I could give it a description if I want to. And then I'm going to make sure that I place it in my shared folder that is shared with the rest of the team, the Andy's Chop and Pop Assets folder here. I'll click Create. So now this is creating that asset template. And I can see it in my shared folder here. Once I've created that asset template, if I want to make any adjustments to it, modify it, maybe add script or whatever, I can right click the, um, the entity in the uh, hierarchy and then I can click Edit Template Definition. I can also right click the asset template in the assets library and do the same, Edit Template Definition. OK, so here I am. I can make edits and adjustments and tweaks to my asset template. If at any point I want to cancel what I'm doing and discard, then I can click the Discard button. However, if I've made adjustments and I want to publish those across all of the different asset template instances across the different worlds, I can click Save. I can um, write a description of what I've changed um, to inform the rest of the team. And then I can either save and publish later if I want to make additional changes, or I can click Save and Publish. And then this will update across all of the instances of where that asset template has been used across all the different worlds. Everything we've talked about is covered in the documentation you'll find on Meta for Developers. Be sure to take a look for more details. To continue building your collaboration skills, it's worth documenting your team's specific workflows based on what you've learned today. I would suggest starting with small collaborative projects to refine the process in your team, and then check out the resource links provided. This video connects directly to our other video in the series where we go into more detail about setting up your development environment, choosing optimal paths for storing your code, how to integrate Git and GitHub with your workflow, and some advanced version control techniques. By implementing these collaborative practices, you'll be able to work more efficiently with your team and create more ambitious world experiences together. Thanks for watching and happy creating.